Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So I just got a bunch of mail, had a lot of interruptions with my sleep this week, so I wasn't able to get filming what I wanted to. I also was very busy preparing for an online art convention, but I wanted to get on here and film. I don't really like first impressions because I feel like it's not really an accurate review, but at the same time, I just don't really have time to do anything but those. And with so many other reviews on the internet, I do not consider myself to be a qualified makeup reviewer by any means. I really can only tell you guys what I like and don't like. And when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, generally I will have at least one thing to like about almost every palette I choose to spend my money on because bear in mind, I'm buying all of these. So I'm just going to let this video be a demo of a bunch of different random stuff just so that you guys can see, particularly for the thumbnail, I guess. I'm going to be testing out these two products. The big mega mothership palette is coming. I just haven't been feeling inspired for it recently, so bear with me reviewing these two. My flower nose teddy bear contour also arrived and I really want to try out this white shade and I might use the rest of the palette as well just for fun. My order of the uh, eye pots from Jaclyn Cosmetics came in. I have three shades. I have Frozen, Icicle, and Tinsel. I was initially going to get the entire bundle of six, but I ultimately, when they dropped on Ulta, I just decided to get just a few. I know the, sh the shades looked really similar online. Now that I'm seeing in-person swatches from people who have received the PR packages, I see that they're a lot more different, but I just went ahead and got the three that I knew stood out the most to me. I think I'll incorporate these somehow. For now, that's it. I'm gonna start with the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum. No particular reason I'm using this today, I just felt like it. Um, I like it, it's nice. I don't use it as often as I should, probably. It definitely is getting drier and cooler now, so with that, that means my skin is gonna go from dry to bone dry, which is fun. Yeah, I just, I've had a really busy week. The bigger thing that really was taking up all of my time is that I, I'm using the Jaclyn primer. I hadn't my, I've been seeing a dietitian for a, a, several months now to guide me through the low FODMAP process for IBS. And so far I have not really tracked a roadmap of a normal IBS patient. I'm very atypical, not what she expected at all. In fact, it's gotten to the point where she was like, I just, I just don't know if it's IBS or, if it's something else and so I have been renewing my research into reproductive problems because I could have sworn that I had endometriosis but after my ultrasound returned clear I just kind of got brushed off and I never pursued it further but I think I need to pursue it further so I'll be using my Lancome Taint Idol foundation this is in the shade 95 which before I got a little bit tan this summer fit me quite fine now it's too pale so I guess when I put it on you'll kind of see but that's what contour is for I'm kind of still trying to figure out what I think about the Bobbi Brown foundation. I bought that with my Ulta point, so I only ended up paying 12 or 13 bucks for it. I used to have it, but then I sold it because I totally mismatched my shade. I just got the same shade Pony got, but she like, that, that, that was not her shade either, I guess. I'm using this to see if I can compare the two because I'd say this and the Bobbi Brown foundation kind of have like similar like claims. You can see it's too light. It matched me. It matched me in the spring when I was really, really pale. But then I did tan a little bit this summer just from like running errands to the grocery store, going to Costco at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You're, you're gonna tan a little bit. Not as strict about my SPF as I wish I was. I just forget and I neglect it. Uh, definitely next summer, I'll try and be more proactive about bringing around my hat and stuff like that. But, so my face is darker than normal. Once you blend it out though, it doesn't make me look ashy or anything. It's just that you can just definitely tell that I got a tan. <laughs> Oops. Just kind of reopened my search for endometriosis again, see if I can pursue it because I found out that if you get an ultrasound, an ultrasound is essentially useless I'm using the JX triple concealer. And I found this one center in Atlanta that people seem to really like. And you don't need like a referral or an official diagnosis to go, which is the best part. So if you're like me and you couldn't ever quite get the official diagnosis, you can still apply to be a patient there. It's just that, you know, with the ap application process, there's no promise they'll actually take your case on if they don't feel like you qualify. So I just registered and I'm gonna start working on my application this month and next month I'm gonna try my best to be thorough and I really hope they take me. So yeah, that's just what's been occupying me I did a pretty good job covering these up today, I will say. All right, I'm gonna take, this is uh, the Teddy Bear Contour Palette from Flower Nose now at the time of this video, but I am gonna do, I'm gonna take this white shade right here and I'm gonna run this across my concealer. I just wanna see if it actually like hides the groove like they say it does. I tried it with like 
the Jaclyn under eye palette and then I tried it with like my Too Faced contour palette but they didn't seem to do it the way that the Dear Peachy video showed it because the girl in Dear Peachy was using an actual white product and that's just not something you can find in America but it's definitely pretty popular in Asia. I don't really see any difference but I'll, have to, I'll try this out more. I do really like the other two shades. Very, very neutral, no red, no orange and also not super great either so I really love this whole arrangement of colors. Prime the eyelids. Makeup Revolution Prime and Lock. I do recommend this. I do like this for my bone dry eyelids. It is quite nice. And I can recommend this to you guys because it's six US dollars. If you guys want to try it, it is really of like minimal impact to most people to try this. This is really nice. It's not opaque. It's not like a concealer. I wish I could find something as opaque as the ABH eye primer, but not as drying as that one was. While that's settling, I am gonna do my eyebrows. I now do my eye primer before my eyebrows instead of after because I feel like the eyeshadow also performs much better once I've given the eye primer some time to just kind of sit on my eyelids, chill out. My eyelids are a loiter zone. I do wanna get my eyebrows microbladed someday if I ever have the extra cash. Hmm, not bad. Using brow blade and blackout for the back end of my brows. And then I'm using the pen and dark drapes for the front end of my brows. I know it's complicated. So before I work on my eyes, I do want to go ahead and apply my blush palette just because this is cream. I know he says you can apply the cream over powder, but I just get so suspicious of things like that. So I just, I just can't buy it. I can't buy it. So it's nice because there's a little flap so you won't disturb the product and it won't dry out as fast, I guess. So I'm gonna take a Skin Food Wedge Puff, which I, I don't use this to apply foundation anymore. I just don't really like it, but I will use this to like apply like cream products cause they're just disposable. I'm gonna run that across. I wanna use the middle shade, which is She's Vibrant. And I know these are pretty pigmented, so. Might've gone in with too much, but that's okay. And applying it with a sponge like this, it's not like removing my foundation or anything, which is quite nice. So I definitely appreciate that. And this doesn't feel super like tacky or dewy or moist or anything. I guess I could see it going on top of powder fine. I don't know, I just can't really trust things like that. I've been burned too many times by cream products these days. I don't know how people use cream products so effortlessly because I feel like mine always take my foundation off. So that's nice. I am gonna go back in with the powder blush later once I've like worked on my eyes. I just wanted to put this down first because you know, I haven't powdered my face yet. So that is really pretty. That's what She's Vibrant looks like. Um, this is a pretty sheer application because I will go over it more later. So now let's work on this quad. This is the Bronze Borealis Quad. Oh, my brain's not working. Uh, it comes with a little plastic thing you can peel off the top. Here's what the inside looks like. Really basic and boring, but I like it. Um, I do want to get her other quads like Voyeuristic Vixen and Eternal Eden. I do want those two, just no money right now. <laughs> So I haven't gotten those yet, but I do want to eventually. So I'm gonna go in obviously with the matte first and I'm using a Sonia G brush from Worker Pro. I was gonna stock up during the gift sale event on more brushes, but I just couldn't justify spending that kind of money right now. So I ultimately didn't follow through. I do really want to. So I think next gift card event, I will do so. But this year was is kind of a wash. I'm not gonna really do anything too terribly intense with this quad today, uh, just because I'm not really feeling like it. So I'm just gonna use this mat to really create the dimension, shear it out in some places, and I'll build it up in other places. And this is a really pretty color. I do really like this. It's just been really stressful trying to find like a specialist who will listen to me, and then like I would have to travel, but I feel like it would be worth it so I don't have to go under the knife twice. It's just kind of stressful having to go through their application process. Like I'm gonna have to pull together like like all of my records. It's gonna be like a huge nightmare. I'm just gonna keep it at that. So I'm gonna work on the other eye. I mean, of course the quality of these is great. Like there's not really, I'm not having any issues using these. So I think this is a great eyeshadow personally for me. Okay, so that is looking really nice. So I am gonna go ahead and use this corresponding dark shimmer. Looks really nice. I'm gonna focus this mostly on the outer part of my eyelid. Oh yeah, this is pretty. It felt a little bit hard in the pan. It felt a little bit drier, but it still goes on fine. And I'll stop it right there. 
Yeah, it looks really pretty on the eyes, honestly. Next, I want to take the Jaclyn Cosmetics um, Shimmer Top Coat. I'm gonna take it in Icicle. I think this will make for a really pretty inner corner highlight thingy majig. I could use the other shades in the palette, but the, the pale gold, I'm not really feeling that today. This is a little, a little more less gold, so I think I'll use this. I think it'll match better, honestly. It definitely feels really creamy, and it's really pretty on my finger, so I'm excited. Yeah, you can feel the kind of jelly. It feels almost cooling when you put it down. It definitely feels wet, which is nice for me, and it's really pretty. A lot of it still kind of stuck around on my finger, presumably just because it's so creamy. Pack more on my finger. Mm. This color is everything. Oh my gosh, I love this color. I knew I definitely wanted to get at least Icicle and Tinsel, and I as you can see I made the right choice with that. Um, the only problem I'm having is that it really likes to stick to my finger instead of go onto my eyelid, so it's really I'm really having a lot of product on my finger, but if I just keep going back in, it's not so bad. I'm not the kind of person who will ever pan single shadows, so the wastage is not really super. That's what it's looking like. I would say these are not super opaque in terms of base pigmentation, but the shine they give off is definitely super pretty. It reminds me, it really super reminds me of like a Korean shimmer shadow where it just twinkles. It is so pretty. And it does feel very kind of wet to the touch, which I personally don't mind, but just kind of letting you guys know, I guess. But yeah, again, I like will literally never pan a single shadow, so not a problem for me. I am gonna try it on a brush because I want to apply it on my lower lash line. So I'll see how it picks up on a thin brush. So I don't really think this applies on a brush as well, which I was expecting. Thing. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try an applicator. And there you go, you can see that just looks way better now. Oh my gosh, this is like the perfect under lash line color. I could totally see if I was traveling that I could just use this color every single day. Like this would be the perfect under eye color for me when I'm in China, kind of a thing. Ooh, this is really pretty. I like this a lot. Okay. This isn't quite like bright enough to be a true inner inner corner highlight. So for that, I am going to pop into a highlighter, like a, a face highlighter. <laughs> I'm gonna use Pearl from Becca. Just really quickly, not too much. This is gonna go like on the inner inner corner. Yeah, that just adds a little bit more dimension, that's all. I can't really use pearl on my face very often because it is really, really white, but it's really pretty as an inner corner highlight. Okay, yeah, I love how this turned out. Easy eye look, easy get ready with me kind of a thing, just something that is comfortable for me. I know I only used two of the shades in here, so I'll swatch the other two for you guys. So here are the other two shades. This gold shade is so much more shiny than the goldish champagne-ish bronzes shade. I totally can see myself using this gold. It would be so pretty. Here's my wrist. So I'm gonna swatch one here, then I'll swatch. Yeah, do you see the difference in intensity there? <laughs> so I think I'm not really a, the biggest fan of this shade. I don't know how I'm gonna use it. This gold shade though is definitely really pretty. So those are the two shades I did not use. I'm not really like the world's best swatcher. So I usually just tell you guys to go check out other YouTube channels for swatches. Like if you want really comprehensive swatches, makeup just for fun, Tara Lynn, I mean, swatches galore. I am almost redundant in the face of such amazing swatchers. I'm gonna curl my eyelashes really fast. I'm just gonna wear mascara. Again, this is an easy look, so we're doing easy lashes. And I recently tried a thing where I wore two mascaras and I actually thought it made my lashes look really nice. So I'll kind of like do it on camera just to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, my lashes are curled, so I'm gonna quickly throw some mascara on my lower lashes. I like to do my lowers first. And I'm actually not gonna put on very much just because my lower lash line has so little dark eyeshadow. I don't wanna like look too weird on the lower lash line. So it's just enough to make them barely visible. So now what I do is I take, first I take a waterproof mascara. So I'm gonna use the Cleo Kill Lash just because I find it a little easier to remove than the Peri Pero one. And I'm gonna put just enough that it's gonna hold up my curl and freeze it in place. So I'm not trying to use this to make my lashes look better. I'm just gonna run this really carefully from root to tip so that it fixes the curl. My curl will not really go anywhere. It's just gonna kind of hang out and it should stay in place. As you can see though, my lashes are like barely visible. So I have no lashes. As you guys know, I have short, straight, pathetic, sh 
thin, sparse. All the negative things you could say about eyelashes apply to my eyelashes. I'm going to be using my Lashy Doll mascara again. Now that the mascara has more or less set, I'm going to just like start piling this on. Like I'm not even joking, put on as much of this as you can bear. And suddenly... My lashes got way longer. You are gonna get a little bit of spider lash. It's kind of unavoidable when you put on as much mascara as I have, but in exchange, you get these long lashes. So I'm not complaining. I have lashes. Isn't this impressive? Like, they're longer now. Not, not as long or impressive as other people's eyelashes, which is like everyone else, but I'm pretty proud of these. Like, I have lashes now. You see how long my lashes look now? Yeah, so I'm gonna go back in with my Patrick Ta blush palette now, and I'm going to take the powder shade, and I'm gonna use this to kind of touch up the blush. Now I know that these powders are pretty, pretty intense. I have his monochromatic blushes. I have the shade in She's Seductive and I want to pick up more. They've just been out of stock for a really long time now. I hope he didn't discontinue them. And I know those are like the pigmentation is super sheer, but these instead are like the total opposite. I do prefer blushes I can build, but these are still really pretty. But like literally you only need one dip and you also want to tap off your brush or just dab it on the back of your hand to get that excess product off and you are good to go. And now I am going to take this contour powder and I'm just going to run my brush across all three shades so that they all kind of just mix together. Again, my foundation's a little bit light, so a little bit of contour will bring it back to looking a little bit more normal. And I love this color. This is such a great color for me. I mean, it makes sense. It's a Chinese brand, so it really just looks like it's just adding shadows to my face and or like just kind of naturally tanning my skin down to what it would normally be. So and it blends out really well too, so that's nice. So now you can see that my face has a little bit more dimension put back into it. Like now the foundation doesn't look super white, which is good. Yeah, I'm glad I got this. I don't really want to use a super intense highlighter. Kind of want it to be more sheer. Just gonna ancient hourglass palette. I didn't really see any point in getting rid of it because I bought it. So I'm just mixing these two shades. I did actually get rid of the Ghost Unlocked and the Ghost Blush Quad because I just, the more I thought about those colors, the more I realized I'm literally never gonna use them. So I did end up decluttering that. But this trio is pretty nice. I'm thinking about picking up the Universe one from this year. It sold out at Ulta, which I kind of regret because then I could have used the coupon, but it's on Sephora. So I considered adding it to my basket for the Rouge sale. If you guys like want to see me use it, let me know. Or if we just aren't on Hourglass anymore, then let me know too. I'm really tempted to get it though, because there's a lot of new shades and there's the Infinity Powder, which I think I will love. I might get it just for my own personal collection, but you guys can tell me in the comments. It's been, it's such an easy, simple look and I have spent so much of this video just like talking my head off but yeah I just I just I just have been really feeling I haven't filmed in like four or five days now so I just needed to do something simple I'm gonna use ColourPop another round on my lip I did get my frown line Botox redone finally after pushing it off for six months and I can already feel the difference because I frown like all the time I get Botox so that I stop doing that <laughs> and I've noticed when I smile with my lips closed if I don't have Botox I will smile smiling with my lips closed my, my, my lips will actually part and show my teeth and it looks really strange but once the Botox kicks in I can do this and my lips stay together. Totally awesome. I don't care about like wrinkles or anything. I literally just, I am such a frowner and it needs to stop. I like, I, it's such a bad habit. So I get Botox just to stop me from frowning. Like if you've ever known people who have the little lines on their forehead, like Teresa calls them her student loan stress lines. I just frown a lot out of habit and I just really wanted to stop doing that. And the Botox really helps. Yeah, there we go. That's the color I was thinking about. I feel like I have this in a matte formula somewhere. I just either that or it's in my style of Anna order that's just like lost in space somewhere. Between Roman and M Cosmetics, it's like they're constantly just like fighting neck to neck, wrestling each other down to the ground to see who I will use next. Like that's what I feel like. It's like those two brands in my collection are just constantly trying to kill each other because I love them both so much I can't decide. I need to trim my bangs again. Here's the finished look. It is honestly pretty simple. Like the end look of it, the end result is simple and it wasn't very complicated, but it is very pretty and I like how it looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me just using a bunch of random new makeup I had. Last holiday was boring as hell, but like, this year is some good stuff, man. Like, I'm like super excited about all this stuff. So bear with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't mind me rambling or <laughs> honestly ranting a little bit, but I will be back very, very soon with more videos and bye.